Hello guys, this is Borgolos Korob from Laravel Daily Team and Daily Channel Laravel Daily Video. It's not actually daily, I've missed two days last week, I apologize for that, but now I'm back with full energy and I hope to continue daily this week. Topic of today is choosing Laravel package. What are the questions to answer, what are the tips and tricks, how to choose what is the better package and what, how, how to choose a package basically. And so I have a list of eight questions for you. Sorry, <coughs> uh, that you should answer in order to choose the package. Question number one is when it was last updated. So if you go to GitHub and uh, you have a list of files and uh, on the right hand side you see updated like months ago, days ago or years ago. So days ago is great. If it's months ago then it's so-so and if it's years ago it's a red flag usually. Uh, if the package is not updated within a year, then it's a really bad sign. It means it's probably abandoned. There are, of course, um, exceptions that the package is so good and so small that it doesn't need to be updated. <coughs> but uh, the, bigger the, ch the, the chances are bigger that it's abandoned, which is a bad sign. So question number one, when it was last updated. Question number two, does it have proper documentation, readme file? any tutorials or any related uh, information. Basically that means is it easy for you to install it, to try it out and to understand how it works. Uh, even the greatest packages it's is not like used properly if, if they don't have documentation. Uh, if you didn't have documentation for uh, sophisticated software like Salesforce or even Laravel actually. Could you use Laravel if it doesn't <coughs> if it didn't have any documentation? Apologies for my voice, it's something actually I'll drink some coffee. Maybe that would help. Yeah, so would you use Laravel if it didn't have documentation? So that's the same with any package of Laravel. Uh, question number three. Who is the creator of the package? What? Who stands behind the package? Is it uh, a personal uh, GitHub username? Is it a brand? Maybe maybe company like Spati from Belgium. So uh, and uh, Google that person. Actually, uh, search on GitHub. Did they have more packages in the past? Which means like if if a person has or a company has more than one package, then they have experience in releasing the packages, updating them. Um, they they are okay with releasing the second package after the first, uh, so it, it's a good sign. If it's the first package by a person, and if they don't have their well so-called brand or like name or other uh, other I don't know medals, <laughs> uh, then it's it's doubtful to use that package. So so who is the creator is also really important. Question number four. Is it updated for the latest Laravel version or for the version you're using? Uh, that's actually quite important because um, with every new Laravel version, well, well minor version, that comes every half a year, it's usually, there are usually some problems, but not with Laravel specifically, but with packages. If packages are not updated, then uh, people are stuck with, uh, with earlier Laravel version and cannot really upgrade. So you should choose the vendor, choose the, again, that's related to who is the creator. Uh, so they should update versions, uh, Laravel versions for packages. Sometimes it is a separate branch, as it happened for our quick admin. So Laravel versions were pretty different, like 5.0 and 5.1 from what I remember. So yeah, we had to create a separate branch and that's okay because there's no other clear way, an easy way. But uh, there should be information about what versions are supported and the latest, the later version, the better. <clears throat> and uh, to be honest, with the latest version 5.3 and 5.4, uh, structurally there are quite, a, quite a few amount of changes, so few changes. So if the package supports 5.3, it's a high chance that it does support 5.4 as well. So for our quick admin, we didn't really have to upgrade anything. I think it was some minor detail or something like that. Uh, and it, we could just uh, upgrade the version, just change the version to that we support 5.4 now. Okay, that was question number four. Question number five is issues. In GitHub issues, there is a section and uh, there is a number there. How many issues? But it's not only that, there are actually two numbers, issues total and issues solved. 
So my rule of thumb is there should be more solved issues than there are open issues. Uh, there shouldn't be like zero open issues is also quite strange because then it means that no one actually is using the package and no one finds any bugs. But it should be like the, the ratio, like uh, 100 issues in total and 60 is solved. That's fine, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it basically means that the vendor is active, uh, supporting the package, maybe not immediately, but they fix the bugs, they release new versions, and they solve the issues for their users. So if there are more open issues than solved issues, uh, or if there are no solved issues, then, then it's quite a red flag because you wouldn't have any, any support from the vendor. So that was question number five. Question number six is uh, how big are the numbers behind the package? Of course, it doesn't really um, apply to, to new package, which is like totally new on the market. But uh, in general, it does give an impression how many stars the package have, uh, that has on, a, on GitHub, then how many forks and how many downloads. Downloads actually uh, is, is not on GitHub specifically or publicly, but you can find it on Packagist. So Packagist uh, gives the, the amount of downloads per package and it should be at least thousands. Then, then like it's mature enough and popular enough. So that's question number six. Question number seven is uh, community, community recommendations. So what happens if you Google the package or if you Google the keywords for the package like Laravel PDF package or something like that? Uh, does it come up on the first page of Google in the first results? Does it have any reviews or tutorials from the community or like good reactions, positive reactions, tweets, anything like that? So just Google the package and see if it's actually supported by the community and recommended by the community. That was question number seven. And finally, question number eight. After researching and doing all of that uh, questioning, uh, ask, yourself, ask yourself, do you even need that package? Because sometimes all you need basically is a few snippets of code to perform certain operations. And if you install the whole package of that, for that, uh, it's just, it becomes, well, bloatware, <laughs> the, your whole application, every new package is a new dependency. So again, the same thing, if you rely on the package to do some stuff, then Laravel is upgraded to a newer version and that package, uh, you rely on that package to do some stuff and it's not upgraded to the latest Laravel version, then you're stuck, you cannot upgrade easily. So every dependency, every package is uh, is a good thing to have, but it's also a risk of, of uh, being stuck with that package for a long time. Uh, so that was eight questions. I will repeat them. Uh, just to recap, question number one, when it was last updated. Uh, question number two, does it have documentation and readme file? Question number three is, who is the creator of the package? Question number four, is it upgraded to the latest Laravel version or the version you're using? Question number five is how many issues and how many solved issues the package has. Question number six, the numbers behind the package, how many stars, forks, and downloads. Um, question number seven is, is it supported by the community and is it can you find it on Google? And question number eight, do you even need that package? So that's that are my, my thoughts for, uh, for choosing Laravel packages. Uh, do you have more questions to add? Please, please join me in the comments and please be active. I'm grateful for first comments on previous videos. Uh, so I'm glad that you joined the conversation. Uh, let's, let's keep it active and see you in the next video of Laravel Daily Video.